few more points uh, regarding overfit we have already discussed that the resolution of this network is uh, around 36 that is whenever you move from one pixel in the output to the next adjacent pixel at the input side you will be moving almost almost by 36 pixels that is your receptive field will change from this red box to somewhere over here to this box the lower your resolution the better uh, will be your accuracy but uh, at the same time it will increase your computation cost so in case you want to improve the resolution there is one technique that you can do as is uh, done in the overfeed paper so in the overfeed paper what they do is for a uh, 245 by 245 input image the output of the last convolution layer will be 15 by 15 feature map and uh, after the convolution uh, layer they use a 3 by 3 pool with a stride of C, uh, 3 and a padding of 0 with this pooling you will get a 5 by 5 feature map output how do you know uh, what is the size of the feature map you can apply this formula and you will get the 5 by 5 feature map output and then we just convolve with the 5 by 5 filter in the fully connected layer and to get the 1 by 1 output and then we have uh, another 1 by 1 uh, filter to get another 1 by 1 output and so on and so forth so that's how the network is uh, designed now uh, with this setup how do you imp increase the resolution of the network one thing what you can do is instead of using the uh, stride of 3 you can go for a stride of 2 now what happens is if you apply this formula you will get 7 that is you will get a 7 by 7 feature map output so with this if you convolve uh, with the 5 by 5 filter in the fully connected layer first fully connected layer you will get a 3 by 3 output okay so that's why uh, even at the end very end your output will be of size 3 by 3 spatial output so this is one way of improving the resolution since uh, from 1 by 1 output you are going to 3 by 3 you will be able to increase the resolution from 36 to 12 that is basically you can divide 36 by 3 you will get 12 so this way you can improve the resolution of your network and similarly you can do this for all the image pyramid uh, scales so once you finish doing that this will be the size of your outputs instead of 1 by 1 you will have 3 by 3 instead of 2 by 3 you will have 2 into 3 6 3 into 3 9 so that's how you get 6 into 9 and uh, similarly for all other cases and the same thing here even for the bounding box regressor you will have into 3 so basically you will get uh, spatial outputs in all the cases that's the last topic that is left to discuss about overfeed and uh, finally this is a very generic topic when you are doing the object detection you will end up with multiple detections for a single object so for example if you consider the image dimension of size 281 by 317 where you are getting a 2 by 3 uh, spatial output in the normal case with a resolution of 36 okay so here what happens is this is your first scanning window location and this blue box is your uh, receptive field so in this case you will definitely be able to identify this cat though the cat is not completely visible your overfit uh, network will make a guess maybe it will give this bounding box okay and uh, at the next uh, position here this cat is not uh, fully visible so but uh, more portion of the second cat is visible so even here it will take a guess and give some bounding box so maybe this is your bounding box for the uh, next cat this is the third portion uh, here more part of the cat is visible so probably your network is more confident here so let's say in the first case the confidence is 0.85 in the second position that is here the confidence might be 0.8 and here since more, more part of the cat is visible the confidence will be slightly higher maybe 0 0.9 okay so this is the second detection point uh, green box with 0 0.9 and uh, in this place since uh, we can see that some part of the cat is not visible the rest is still visible the body legs tail everything everything else is uh, visible so even here your uh, your network will try to guess the extent of this cat so it might give you this bounding box of course it's not accurate but uh, this is the best that your network can do with this receptive field so here maybe the confidence score for the cat will be 0.7 or something so at this position even here it will try to predict some bounding box for this cat so this blue box might be the bounding box that it predicted uh, even here the confidence might be very very less it might be 0.65 or something like this so even in this position uh, the most part of the cat is visible except the top portion of the head so it will give you one more prediction which will be something like this blue box okay since the cat is not fully visible the confidence will be very less maybe 0.75 okay so this will be 
the uh, spatial output table and uh, these red and uh, yellow boxes will be the bounding boxes at different positions at all the 2 by 3 positions all the 6 positions uh, please ignore the cats in the background here assume that there are only two objects so here we can see that for every object you will end up with multiple detections this is usually the case uh, whichever object detection network you use for most of the objects you will end up with multiple detections because at multiple sliding window positions the objects are uh, partially visible so your network will take a guess as to, as to the extent of the object but uh, they will all these detections will differ in terms of the confidence scores as we have already seen okay so that's how it is but here we can clearly see that uh, for this cat the red bounding box is the correct one the yellow one is not very accurate even here for this cat the green bounding box is the correct one but uh, the other three blue boxes here are not uh, accurate so there has to be a way we have to do some post processing to select this red box for the first cat and this green box for the second cat how do we do that for that we use a technique called non max separation okay i have already discussed this concept while i was uh, discussing the uh, dalal and tricks detector with hog and svm okay so what i will do is instead of going through the non max detector again i will just repost the same video in the ne next video will be the same video that we that we already saw in the dalal and tricks detector the only difference will be that this matrix here that i have used in that video will uh, will be the spatial output in this case for the uh, overfeed network and uh, the difference will be that instead of svm i am using a uh, softmax as a classifier and uh, in the example that i have given i was uh, using the case of human detection as an example to explain you the concept of non max separation so please uh, if you have not already watched this video please go through the video and i hope you will be able to understand how nms that is non max separation is done and uh, these are the results of uh, overfeed paper this example is for the 245 by 245 image for the base, base dimension and here i am getting the 1 by 1 output instead if i use the high resolution version of the same network i'll be getting the 3 by 3 output for the same image dimension okay so this 3 by 3 output uh, i'll have multiple bounding boxes at each position so these are the bounding boxes uh, that uh, you will get in the overfit network for this image and then after applying uh, non max separation this is the result that you will get you will have a single bounding boxes and you would have eliminated all the other ones which have a overlap with this one okay but uh, just remember that in overfit they use a different uh, technique to do the non max separation that is they use some greedy merge strategy but uh, i have not seen this technique used anywhere else so i am not uh, going into details of how it is if you are interested you can uh, just look into the paper yeah now uh, the last topic is coming to the discussion of uh, how many objects can you detect so this is the uh, network at the be best resolution that is instead of 1 by 1 i am getting a 3 by 3 output so at this resolution for the 245 by 245 image i will be able to detect around 9 objects of one class okay for any one class i'll be able to detect 9 objects that is in this case if here uh, here if there are 9 cats i'll be able to detect all of them at this scale provided uh, they are small enough and uh, similarly at the next scale i'll be able to detect up to, up to 54 objects maybe you can say 54 cats and at this scale 135 objects 315 378 630 and so on so if you add up you will be able to detect almost 1500 objects of the same class if you take all the classes into consideration for example in a pascal data set you will have 21 classes 20 classes plus one background so you will be basically able to do almost 30000 detections so so many objects you can theoretically identify practically it's not possible theoretically you will be able to identify so many of them and uh, that's the reason why you are seeing so many bounding boxes here since here i'm using just 3 by 3 matrix i should have had just nine bounding boxes but here you can see so many of them basically these are all the combined predictions for in the overfit paper if you look at the results it is predict uh, predicting it as uh, bear then turtle i think uh, it also predicts it as a whale and uh, so on so if you combine the bounding boxes for all the different classes this is what you will get it looks very cluttered but when you are doing the non max separation you have to do it class wise okay why should you do class wise maybe there is a possibility that uh, let's say there is a human who is uh, holding a cat and is standing in front of the car 
So even in this case, you can't apply the non-max separation for all the classes at once. Instead, you have to do it uh, class-wise so that you won't end up mistakenly eliminating the bounding box for the humans and the cat when you are doing it for the car. So that's the general technique. Here finally, you are seeing only one bounding box for the bear. So what happened to the bounding box, bounding box for the whale and the turtle? Because it will have the very low confidence scores, it will just get eliminated. That's it. So during the non-max suppression stage, because of the confidence score, these uh, two categories will get eliminated and only the bear will be remaining. And uh, also note that these are all the bounding boxes for the bear at all these image pyramids. So basically when you are doing the NMS, you have to combine all the bounding boxes into one final uh, table and then do the NMS, that is non-max separation. So yeah, that's about uh, overfit.